the State v. Richard Alexander Murdoch Defendant, Indictment for Murder, SC Code 16-3-0010, CDR Code 0116. Okay. Guilty verdict. Becky Hill, the clerk of courts for Colleton County, being accused of jury tampering by Alec Murdoch's lawyers. We never considered the likelihood, as reported to us by the jurors, that the clerk of court would go in to the sanctity of the jury room before he testified and tell the jurors, don't be fooled by his testimony. Murdoch's lawyers claim Hill was out for fame and fortune. Now the ghostwriter of her book talks about his experience with her. The only thing I can tell you is, is her integrity, which is she's one of the most genuine people I have ever met. She's a rule follower. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Becky Hill was in the courtroom for each day of Alec Murdoch's double murder trial as both the prosecution and the defense presented evidence. She saw everything the camera saw and nearly everything that happened behind the scenes. Alec Murdoch's lawyers say that became a problem when Hill started discussing her feelings about Murdoch with jurors and having private conversations with the foreperson. We did try to reach out to most all of them that we could get in touch with, but we, you know, the information we got, I can tell you, was independent of each juror. The first juror we talked to, we got information about Ms. Hill saying, don't be fooled. And, and then the second juror, independent of the first juror, says the same thing, and the third juror, independent of the other two, say the same thing. And so we're very confident that the information is accurate. Murdoch's lawyers say their client deserves a new trial for the murders of his wife Maggie and son Paul if the allegations they are making are true. Hill, according to Murdoch's motion for a new trial, made up a story about a Facebook post that claimed a juror dubbed Egg Lady had talked with her ex-husband about the case. That juror was removed right before closing arguments and replaced with an alternate, James McDowell, whose brother happened to be one of the deputies who responded to Moselle the night of the murders. Murdoch's lawyers believe Egg Lady would have voted not guilty, possibly causing a hung jury. Becky Hill was a fixture at the trial. Everyone called her Miss Becky. She even received a shout out from the attorney general following the verdict. I want to thank uh, the Carlton County Clerk of Court, Becky Hill, and her entire team and their staff. I don't know. I call her Becky Booth. That's her nickname. But Madam Clerk, wherever you are tonight. I'm sorry. That's my, that's my pet name for her. Uh, but I want to thank you, Madam Clerk, for you, the entire team. So why would Becky Hill talk with jurors in violation of the court's order? Murdoch's lawyers say she had plans after the trial that a mistrial would have derailed. Those plans included writing a book. The book came out several weeks ago and is entitled Behind the Doors of Justice. Her ghostwriter, Neil Gordon, spoke with me about his experience with Becky Hill. I started working with her in late March. It was an interesting way that we came together. My wife, like millions of others, was uh, sort of obsessed um, watching Law and Crime and some of the other networks. And she also went to Walterboro for a couple of weeks and via chance meeting with Becky, uh, took a selfie and um, reached back to her, mentioned she may want to write a coffee, may want to do a coffee table book. And Becky said, well, I may want to write a book. And so they put us together and uh, we accomplished writing the book within six months. Is that fairly quickly? Is that fairly quick for a book? Six months? Most books are, and many of the Murdoch books are a year to two years in the making. So yes, I would say it was a pretty rapid pace. Interesting. What is your reaction, first off, to the allegations made by Alec Murdoch's defense team? Well, I was very surprised at a lot of the allegations. Um, the Becky Hill that I've known for six months, I mean, I asked her every question under the moon about all of her duties, dealing with the jury and the attorneys and the judge and the public and the media and everything. And the only thing we discussed, um, which gave me an idea about her 
integrity. She said it was a very prayerful jewelry. And I said, well, did you get to pray with them? And she said, oh, goodness, that is against my oath of office. We're not allowed to do that. We did pray with folks on my staff, but it was just a prayerful jewelry. So it was very surprising. And, and you know, one of the reasons I wanted to come on is uh, Dick Arpulian and Jip, Jim Griffin tried to pin uh, the book as a linchpin or a reason why some of these allegations were made and, and what she's alleged to have done. They're claiming that she wanted to make money. She wanted fame and celebrity. She wrote the book. Are you yeah. aware of her getting any type of advance or was this self-published? Yeah, this is a self-published book. And that, uh, excuse me, this is a self-published uh, book, Angelette. I mean, together, we put $30,000 of our own money because we believed in having a piece of history for what's considered the trial of the century. And so we put our blood, sweat and tears and money into it. So to say that there, you know, was a book deal, you know, that's why, you know, perhaps uh, some of those allegations were made is ridiculous. It was self-published. So you're telling me she didn't make any money off of this book, maybe only the money or the sales from, um, you know, selling the book on Amazon and wherever else it's for sale. Oh, sure. It's a self-published book and works like anyone else. And and she's entitled, and it was checked through the uh, Ethics Commission, she's entitled like anyone else um, to write a book and to offer up her opinions. And in this case, I mean, you know, the title says it all. I mean, behind the doors of justice, this was just an opportunity to explain a little bit how the sausage was made, if you will. Um, and, and for her to be able to explain just how things, um, you know, happen behind the scenes. And it's just a fascinating read. Um, and, and there is an opportunity for there to make money. Has it made money yet? Don't know if it will. But um, really was just a great opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity uh, to take a snapshot in history. I asked Neil Gordon about the allegations that Becky Hill was having private conversations with the jury four person, sometimes in a one person restroom. Well, I wasn't there, so I wasn't privy to any of these supposed back office conversations. The only thing I can tell you is is her integrity, which is she's one of the most genuine people I have ever met. She's a rule follower. Um, not one, as I mentioned about the prayer, not one to, to try to deviate to her oath of office, which she took very seriously, especially under the guidance of Judge Newman, who she respects greatly. She will be um, continuing to review these allegations with her attorneys in Columbia. They will be putting out a statement and we'd be happy to send that to you. I can't speak for her uh, other than I can I can vouch for her character. So she never made any mention to you about conversations with jurors, interactions with jurors, anything like that? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, you know, there's very typical conversations that go on if somebody's sick, um, things of that regard, hello uh, kind of thing. She's sort of like the operations manager in a big company. She's just uh, working with a lot of different entities, um, but uh you know, those were the only conversations that we, you know, we talked about uh, her having uh, with the jury. But you're saying you never got any inkling of this, what, what's in this paperwork, you know, it's a lot. Um, sure. You never had any inkling about this. She never conveyed anything of the sort to you. And I spent, like I said, six months with her, a lot of nights and weekends. And I asked her every question imaginable about where she was, what she was thinking, mm -hmm. who she had conversations with, what she overheard, just the, the major who, what, why, where that we would all ask. And never uh, did anything at all come up like that. The, the only thing, like I say, that we did put in the book was, was about the prayer. And I was touched by um, how she defended their right to pray, but the fact that she wasn't allowed uh, to pray with them. It's just against the the rules of conduct for a clerk of court. So she prayed with her staff, but obviously Correct. not praying with the jurors. I mean, I remember Correct. specifically one of the jurors telling me that they prayed every day. That's um, right. 
Okay. Yeah, very prayerful jewelry. It's, I mean, it's in chapter 12 of Behind the Doors of Justice, she listed the fact that they were, I think it was um, prayerful, persistent, and I'm forgetting the last P, but in in describing the jury, just um, how purposeful they were and careful they were, um, uh, you know, uh, in terms of however they, you know, conducted their business. As for the allegations, Neil Gordon expects Becky Hill to respond at some point. What I know about Becky is that she's going to tell the truth, whatever the allegations are, she's going to respond and tell the truth. And I know that she's not going to get into any kind of a spitting match with the Murdoch attorneys. She has her own attorneys and they're reviewing all of the allegations. And soon enough, uh, she'll make a statement and make some comments. But I just wanted to come on and, and speak for myself and My name's on the book, and um, there seemed to have been a problem with it, and I thought I'd speak out. The attorney general's office issued a statement saying that a response would be filed with the court at an appropriate time. Meanwhile, I've contacted an attorney who's believed to be representing Becky Hill. So far, I have not received a response. For Law and Crime, I'm Anjanette Levy.